On Foodies Know, we like to bring you the stories of the people behind the food. Now, we hope you enjoyed our previous episode where we joined Chef Dexter Burris from Grenada to make a seared tuna, plantain cake and mango salsa dish. We hope that's made you curious enough about Grenada. We bring you a special interview with Chef Dexter where he takes us to Grenada. He talks about his favorite places on the island, beautiful, beautiful spots. He talks about his favorite dishes and why you should visit Grenada. joining us on our second episode of stories from the spice island grenada and we have with us chef dexter burris this man is somebody whose cuisine i have tasted and i i can tell you without a shadow of a doubt he is excellent at what he does so hello chef and welcome to today's series thank you how are you uh, i'm well thank you so let me just start by asking you to introduce yourself, please. So tell us you know, who you are, talk to us about your journey as a chef and how you've come to open Dexter's Kitchen. All right. Well, my name is Dexter Boris, as you um, have introduced me as. Um, also, I'm a chef. Been doing that for the last 30 something years, more than half of my life. I started off in Spice Island, Inn, then I went on to the ships. Worked there for about 17 years. Come back to Grenada, worked in a hotel for 17 also, years again. And then from traveling all over the world, I decided, well, you know what? It's time to do put a twist to my own style. Mm. A different cuisine and especially um, using our local produce and spices. So that is how I... We arrived to the point of creating Dexter's Kitchen, and we are located in Grand Anse, overlooking the famous beach, Grand Anse Beach. Yes, it's uh, one of the most famous beaches in, in Grenada, isn't it? Or even, I think it's the, the most Caribbean. famous in the Caribbean. Sorry. Yeah. It, is, it is one of the most spectacular beaches I've, I've ever seen. You were you were head chef at the Calabash for for some time. 14, for seventeen years. Seventeen years. And how old is Dexter's Kitchen now? Dexter's Kitchen is going on three years. And I left the Calabash in twenty seventeen, and I started Dexter's Kitchen, and it has been a good journey so far. Now, having worked in, in big hotels and on ships, and now moving to a smaller, more unique concept what, what challenges have you faced making that transition well really and truly i haven't had challenges so far because what really happened is that i i a matter of fact i did not expect the success of the of the restaurant um that quick so it's so on the contrary it, it's only positive just to put it in that light i haven't done one advertisement as yet not even one so that speaks for itself it does. Because people who come tell other people and they tell other people and that's how this thing spread. So challenges, because we're getting produce. It's, it's yeah. not that we, we, we didn't get in it. We were getting produce locally and internationally. So everything was there. And because I had the experience of managing other kitchens and, and restaurants, it was really, really easy for me to just um, make the transition okay. from from other kitchen to my own kitchen. Um, so you, you talked about the produce, local produce. Talk to us about the supply chain on the island. Fresh produce like fruits and vegetables. Mm -hmm. 
we have it on the island. There, there is no shortage of that. The fish, we have that. All my fish is locally sourced. The thing that we, we import is things like the steaks and shrimp. Uh, we get it from, we get shrimp from neighboring Tr Trinidad and Tobago. And we have that in all the time, every week. So produce is, is not, is not um, a problem on this island. And, and you know we have all the spices. I keep on just using what we have. I mean, because it's fresh and it's available. Yes. And that's what you need when you're, when you're trying to create a, a kitchen and a restaurant, um, small and unique kind of personal, fresh produce mm -hmm. and fresh ingredients. That is what you want. And if you're getting it on the island, um, you don't have a problem. And I don't have a problem with that at all. I have it to my leisure and abundance. <laughs> That's great. Let's talk about Grenada a bit. What part of the island did you grow up in? All right, so the most southern part of the island, mm -hmm. and that is St. George's and Grand Dance. So I always, always, always live overlooking Grand Dance Beach. I born in Grand Dance on top of a hill, and I build my house a little bit lower down the hill. I always looking at Grand Dance Beach and I mean, the world know about Grand Dance Beach. Most yeah. people know about it. And if you don't know about it, man, you gotta come to Grenada to experience Grand Dance Beach. It's one of a kind. And as I said before, I travel the world. There is nothing like Grand Dance Beach. It's really, really unique. And people need to come and see it. So I guess, you know, that means you are a bit biased. That if I ask you what's the most beautiful part of the island for you, and if you can paint a picture for us, would you say it's, it's the same Grand Dance or somewhere else? Well, Grand Dance Beach is number one. Okay. I'll tell you the reason why. Um, it's not because I grew up in Grand Dance and I live here for quite some time. There is a magic on Grand Dance Beach that most people um, don't know about. Now, I live on the... If you're coming from the airport side, I live on the northern side of the beach. That is not too beautiful. If you go down, where I get my, my view from is when I go to the southern part, past the Spice Island Beach Resort, and you go all the way to the end of the beach. Now, walking down to that beach, you won't see any beauty. But when you turn around and you start coming back up, that's where the beauty lies. What you're going to see is that you're going to see the whole of St. George's, which is yeah. the, the capital, yeah. the city, you're going to see that. Also, you're going to see the Granita, which is the rainforest. Oh, you're going to yeah. see all this in the background. I mean, it is the most picturesque part, the picture that I ever, ever seen in anywhere else in the world. I'm telling you about that. And the second part in Grenada that I really, really love, it's, it's Granita. Granita is the rainforest. Mm -hmm. And I, I guarantee you, any time of day, any time in the year, could it be, granites normally be really hot and dry and everything like that, but when you go up to the granite time, it is yeah. so refreshing. And I really, really love that. And I always encourage people, at least once, once in your trip in Grenada, go up to the rainforest. Mm. It's going to really change everything about you. Your whole demeanor, um, fresh air and everything will come in and make your lungs feel and you're going to come back down feeling renewed. So I, I, that is my two favorite parts on the island. Not the falls, not Noel, but Grand Dance, Grand Dance Beach and the rainforest. Amazing. Thank, thank you for painting that beautiful picture for us. I can already imagine that in my head. Oh my God, it's even a <laughs> hundred times more beautiful. Tourism is, is a big part of, of Grenada's economy. And like the rest of the world right now, travel and hospitality industry is, is facing challenges. How has the community, uh, especially the hospitality community, pulled together, worked together to weather this, this current storm that we're all facing? It's it, it really challenging now because this is something new. I mean, we went through difficult times before with Ivan and stuff like that but at least this thing just passed and it went and then we get up we rebuild and we, we get back on our feet and uh, with this one now it's a little bit more challenging because we right now on on lockdown we have three days in a week which we go out we as hotels uh, not really hotels but um, restaurant could open just for takeaway so we we, we we have that 
three days a week. And it has been challenging because uh, we have to change everything around, and understandable so, because yeah. of the safety of everyone. Um, but we do pull in ourselves together. We, we're doing what we have to do because yeah. we're going to come out. The end, at the end of it all, we want to come out and we want to come out safe and we want to be better. So yeah. we're, doing, we're not doing too bad. We're doing okay. Oh, that's good news. That's good to hear. Um, yeah. And, and I, I share your hope and optimism that we'll come out on the other end of this as soon as possible. And, they, and that means we can all come and visit Grenada again. <laughs> We're going to come out better than ever before. I, I believe that. Yeah, I will just tell you this. The beaches are closed still, um, but I had the opportunity just to walk down, just to see the water. I mean, it is apps, it is crystal clear. I don't know why, but I I'm telling you, just tempting to just jump in, you know. <laughs> I've never seen the water that clear before. So I'm wow. just going to say to people, the first, the first flight to get to this country, <laughs> to, to get to come to this country, jump in it, because you're going to get a tree, you know. <laughs> oh, awesome. Okay, so let's let's talk about food again. Grenada has so many interesting dishes, so many spices that infuse the food and the flavors. What is your favorite local dish? You know, I've been asked that question all the time, especially by my guests who come to my restaurant. They want to know, what is the favorite dish you have on this menu? And I say to them all the time, and I'm going to say to the world now, um, I, my mom, my mom is, my mom was a really good cook. And, and, and then we, we grew up from humble beginnings. She, she made a dish one time, because most of the time when people ask a Grenadian, what is your favorite dish? The first thing that comes to mind is oil duck, but that's not my favorite dish. My favorite dish is a local rice and peas, and they call it stew fish which is really rice and pigeon peas with a, a, a light fry um, fish in a Creole sauce. That's mm -hmm. what it is. But I taste that when I was about the age of six, seven. I taste it from my mom. And that taste never come out of my mouth. It don't matter what I do, I just cannot get that taste back. So rice and peas with shoe fish, I'm telling you, it's something to die for. It's right. almost like a Sunday dish, you know. I mean, most yeah. people on the island, they might have, well, it used to be rice and peas and, you know, chicken or something like that. But these days, I mean, they, 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 they're changing a lot on the island, but that still is my favorite dish, rice okay. and peas and stew fish. Nice. Is that something that's currently featured on your menu? No. Okay. Uh, on, on, unless if someone requests it, you know, okay. it's like oil long, unless you request it, I will not put it on. Because what I try to do, I try to do clean, light, light food on, on my menu because um, what I have is a five course meal and every customer that come in the restaurant, they have five courses. So I got to make it as light as possible so that at the end of the night, you're going to eat the whole five courses and not walk away feeling heavy and, and, and weighed down. So my, my dishes are very, very light, still local, but very, very light. That was my experience when, when we visited in October last year. After the five courses, I felt like I, I had experienced different flavors, different textures, but I didn't feel like I had overeating or anything. It was light, fresh, and the wine combination as well was, was really good. Yeah, that's the whole idea, you know, to make people walk away feeling really, really satisfied and, and, and just wanting to come back for more. Now, what we want to try and do is to give people a glimpse of what you are able to create at Dexter's Kitchen. So is there something that you have in mind to demonstrate this afternoon? I have one other dish on, on, on menu, which is the, the tuna, the seared tuna with a plantain cake and a mango salsa. I normally have a mango and avocado salsa. But avocado just start coming in. So I'm not going to use avocado today. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use a seared tuna with a plantain cake and a mango and avocado salsa. And that is course number three on, 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 on my menu when you come to Dexter's Kitchen. Mm -hmm.